Okay, so Sheikh Al Sanad. Oh no. My payback time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So if someone asks you, I want you to summarize the aqidah of Qadr for me, for people of the Sunnah, or people of the Sunnah, alhamdulillah. So how do you summarize it then? One, two, three, four, done. <laughs> this is tough. Um, What's our belief in the Sunnah, in the Qadr, as people of the Sunnah? That Qadr is an attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and therefore believing in it is wajib. No, but what it means, I mean, not what it's like, you know. How, how do we believe in that? How do we believe in it? Okay. Correct me if I'm believing in it. Yeah, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> audience participation. Call the audience member. No, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has infinite knowledge okay. and wisdom, and uh, therefore, um, you know, we should, you know, we should trust in that. For example, you, know, you go to your doctor, I don't want examples. Oh, you don't have only 30 seconds to. Mm -hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is infinitely powerful and has wisdom and knowledge, and uh, therefore He is most worthy of us uh, believing in those attributes and trusting His judgment. Everything good is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yeah. and everything bad is from our actions. Yeah. Right? And everything, and Allah's knowledge encompasses everything. Yeah, good. Keep okay, so I'm gonna, you know, just carry on with this discussion. You know, I didn't want it to go that direction, but since these things are surfacing, so when when someone does bad, so who did it? Is it them or Allah? Uh, if it's, uh, I mean, we have, we have choice, right, to choose between right and wrong. So if we did something wrong, we chose to do something wrong. It, it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but just because he ordained it doesn't mean that he is pleased with it. Okay, There's a difference between what Allah willed and what Allah commanded. So Allah, mm -hmm. Allah wills everything. Everything that happens is through Allah's will. But Allah does not command us to do bad. Allah commands us to do good. And so mm -hmm. that is the, the difference. The commandment is that. It's not the worst, but Allah, Allah knows what, you'll be, what you will do. And even the perception of bad, which can appear bad mm -hmm. in that small thing, when looked at holistically, will ultimately achieve a meaning of, or something good. Actually, everything. You guys are well read, mashallah. Even the creation of I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Inshallah, we'll, we'll follow a systematic way just to to help you. Yeah, yeah, so which right. one was Raja? Which one was Raja? Harshali Kuri. So. I cannot help but tell you this story. So a few years ago, I was teaching in one of the universities and we used to do oral exams on the phone. And that was, I believe, Aqidah, I think Aqidah 3 or 4, something like that. And that would include believing in the angels, the prophets, the scriptures, and the Qadr, actually. Mm -hmm. So they were like for a lot of things to cover. And that's a very common question of me to ask, like, tell me in three minutes, actually 30 seconds, but well, that's what it takes, like the Aqeedah of Ahl Sunnah and Qadr. So I have this uh, student from Canada, and I told her, you know, just in one minute, just list the Aqeedah of Ahl Sunnah and Qadr. And she goes, and it's the Aqeedah test, right? So you have to talk about the Aqeedah. She goes, so, Laylatul Qadr is in the last 10 days of Ramadan. Okay. And scholars disagree when it is. And it is, you know, but we know that it's in the odd nights of them. I said, no, no. <laughs> said, you're talking about Laylatul Qadr. I'm going to Al Qadr. <laughs> That's Qadr, not Qadr. And she goes, yeah, yeah I know Shaykh, I know Shaykh. It's like, okay. So <laughs> that's <laughs> And she goes, like, you know, the Qadr is the honor and the power. I said, like, you know, this is, uh, like, this is not a fiqh question, okay, this is aqeedah. Talk about the Qadr. So it's not, yeah, well, just give me the chance. And she goes back, you know, and then now we free days. I was getting irritated at that. <laughs> <laughs> so I told her, okay, what is Qadr in, in, uh, in 
English. And she goes to sleep on her and I said, like, okay. What I'm talking about, the qadr, the measurement, the destiny, the uh, fate. fate. We uh, talked about everything else. says like, oh. But I want to talk about Laylatul Qadr. I said, this is not what I mean. <laughs> so I thought, okay. We'll list the six articles of faith for me. And she, she goes like, an iman will be nice. It's like, okay, let's talk about the Qadr. And then she goes, honestly, Sheikh, I skipped that part of the book. Because <laughs> it was the last chapter, right? So... <laughs> <laughs> Did you give her any marks? I actually recommended. I actually recommended to unsign her from the class from the university. Well, yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's it's like the last chapter of the book is like okay, so just <laughs> concluding remarks. Nothing important. Nothing important. Nothing important. Well, the funniest part in the second <laughs> student called in half hour because we had him scheduled to call every like, you know. And I asked her the same question. And then she answered, say, I did not study that part. It was her sister. Each time each time we talk about Qadr it just goes to my mind. So this is point is you have to know this by heart actually. You have to know what other is uh, in a very systematic way. So believing in qadr has four elements. Uh, this is what they call al-kanu iman, the, the pillars of yani, the believing in qadr. And the reason we're talking about is this, the Prophet والسلام, is telling you that Allah, after that, after we talked about the creation, then there is a different process now. You know. That's the physical formation, and now what's going to happen is the uh, basically ordaining and determination of what's going to happen in the life of this human being. So Allah sends the angel, inspires him with the soul, and we talked about uh, the difference of a time when that soul is inspired. And then Allah ordered the angel to write a few things. Kalima means not a word, actually. It means a statement. Or it means, uh, kalima does not, in, even in Arabic, when you say, give us a kalima, meaning give us a lecture or give us a talk. So this, this is basically a, a record of what's going to happen. And four things is going to be determined. The rizqi, meaning his provision. And then a jalihi, meaning his lifespan. Wa amalihi, all what he's going to do. And then, وَشَقِيٍ أَوْ meaning, you know, uh, perished, rich, or happy and blessed. Happy, unhappy, the outcome, right? So in order, there are two things that I want to speak about, okay? That ordination and determination, there are four types of it also. Okay, what is written? When we said Allah has written it, there are four, like, uh, uh, phases for things to be written. So we can do that. And then there is the Iman of the Qadr in general, which we can do. So we can only cover one unit. This is exactly what I was saying. Which one you want to cover? Al Qadr Iman? No, not Al Qadr. Okay. Four the phases? The four, like, is that the best order? or uh, Either one. So. Four the four elements in the hadith versus the four phases of no. So this is what they call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written everything. That's what put al kitaba or al qadr. So Allah has like everything universal, qadr, which is written for everything in the world, right? And then you have what they call the life qadr. This is what is meant here. That Allah yeah, he orders the angel to that's in the second 40 days, that the beginning of the 40 days. And then you have the annual Qadr. Mm. That is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends on Laylatul Qadr. 
إنا أنزلناه في ليلة مباركة إنا كنا منزلين فيها يفرق كل أمر حكيم Every matter is determined on that time So that's for all people right? And then also what else? So we talked about the universal We talked about the life We talked about the annual The annual And then we talk about the daily one The Qatar Qadir al That every day Right? So these are the four aspects, and inshallah we'll talk about uh, that in more details next time. So uh, since you did not choose, I chose to, to tell you both about it, just give you like, you know, uh, inshallah a small introduction, and inshallah, at least now, I mean, you know what we're talking about, and uh, we'll fill in the blanks and the gaps more. And then we talk about the elements of the Qadr. So what, when you know, when someone tells you about the other is, this is the four things you need to know about. Number one, how is the Qadr of Allah? And again, we will talk about more details what Qadr really means, right? Which we did actually in one of the, mm -hmm. yeah, the very first basic lectures. Now, the Qadr of Allah includes His knowledge. His infinite knowledge of all So Allah knew about everything Infinitely, eternally For anything that happened And what, ha what is going to happen And what did not happen If were to happen, how would it happen? Does that make sense? So his knowledge, that does not mean that he's forcing you, forcing things on you. Does that make sense? So that's the first element. He knew about it, that doesn't mean that he's forced you to do it. So al-ilm. So the first thing, ilm subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is ilm of things, of everything that happened and that's gonna happen. The second part is, Al Kitaba. Write in it. So his alam was basically just recorded and written of things. And when you say it is written, that does not mean it is forced. It is not compulsory. Just like his alam was written down on the Lawf al Mahfuf, and again, just like we talked. This is why. And that kitaba, we talked about in these four aspects. Mm. Yes. The universal, the life, mm. the annual, and the daily. So it comes down, that's for executing the orders, right? So far, so good? Al-ilm, yes. al-kitaba, and then al-mashia, the will. And al irada. So al mashia to al irada, you can call it will and determination. So mashia wa irada. Meaning that you can, Allah giving you the choice by His choice, but your will cannot. Transcends Allah's will. Mm -hmm. So Allah has given you this space to move and do your own choices. But don't you think you can do anything that Allah does not want you to do? Does that make sense? You cannot overpower Allah. You cannot overrule Allah's will. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the fourth, the, the fourth part is al khalq Creation or bringing to life all the actions. Creation of that. Allah said, Allah khalaqakum wa ma Who created you and what you do. Mm. Right? So anything you do is truly a product that Allah allowed it to happen and it is a creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? So it is His knowledge, it is His writing, 
it is his will, he gave you the will, you cannot over, overwill Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then anything you do is also Allah created it. And this is what that, that brilliant thing someone said actually. If Allah created it, commanded it, right, does, does not mean it pleases him. And if Allah allowed it to happen, that does not mean it pleases, it pleases him. Right? But he allowed it, he created because he created everything, and he allows everything to happen. So when we say Allah has written it, because to you, oh, Allah has already written it. He has written what's going to happen, that does not mean he forced it on you. Is that clear? Yes. All it was a descriptive what's going to happen. And this is basically when he orders the angels, basically, just write what's going to happen. Right? This is for that particular person. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yani fi lawh al mahfuz eternally, or infinitely, like he has only that important. Right? This is part of his, uh, but Allah has done this for the entire universe, not only for you. Right? In the hadith, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the first thing he created was al qalam the pen and he commanded it that write what has happened and everything that's going to happen till the day of judgment. So everything has been recorded and determined and truly the iman al the qadar is not to make you feel like you know you're powerless. Powerless. It's actually to be hopeful that yeah. you know what? Nothing can happen without the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? And you always give you a sense of reassurance and reliance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That yes, they can do this, but unless Allah does not allow it, it's not going to happen. And if Allah is going to allow it, then it's okay. I accept it. Because it's going to be ultimately be good. Right? And then at the same time, that you can plan. And unless Allah allows it to happen, it's not going to happen. So you rely on Allah and accept what he's going to uh, do so you didn't get disappointed mm. right and then also there is one more element uh, inshallah it will come so so that's very much the qadr is to give you more power actually and then yeah the most important thing actually is what we said earlier is that having the sincerity and the ikhlas in all what you do. Because as the rest of the hadith says, unless you have it, all what you do is going to be meaningless. Mm -hmm. You can do all the good deeds you want, unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is satisfied with it. Yeah, you can fool people, but Allah will expose it and you're going to end in the hellfire. And it has already been written. Keep that in mind. That's why a very powerful statement, subhanAllah. I said, like, righteous people are always about what? Khawatim, right? The conclusion, right? Khawatim, right? And the end. The, the last end. Needs. And they say a more righteous person is worried about the beginning, what has been written. Right? Because they say, okay, what is written for me? This is what Sayyidina Umar used to say. Oh Allah, protect me from what has been written. So it's like. Because it's already written in the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa By the knowledge, it's already been written. So worry about it. Like, you know what? Yeah, you can do whatever you want. Unless you're truly sincere, then it's not going to change what's written. Is that clear? That it's written in Allah with Allah. It's written, it's written by Allah for his knowledge, and it's not forced by Allah. It's what you do. So, is there anything new that can change that can change the course? You know what I mean? Because there is a sense of hopelessness so, when when, that's also when we think, no. it, yeah, that's all. Yeah. <laughs> but but I think it's you like if you look, if you think about it temporally, it's not like Allah has written it at a certain point in time, and we are just following from that time forward. It's like Allah is outside of time, so it transcends time and place. So that's. This is inshallah next halaqa will yani, go into details, but this is so it doesn't leave you hanging. Yani, uh, 
So next time I ask you, what is the aqidah of Ahlul Sunnah? And it's knowledge, writing, will, creation. Done. It takes what, like five seconds actually, so. So we're going to stop here. It's very important for those who are going to attend this halakha at least to know what we're talking about, what we talked about today, because we're not going to start all over. So it's going to be time to consume and just to go over everything. So inshallah, we'll finish the qadr. This hadith will certainly be completed next halakha, inshallah. And probably we'll give an introduction to the following hadith. Jazakallah khairan wa